This is the award-winning Ernest Angley Hour, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations. I believe in miracles because I believe in God. As you watch today's program, reach out in faith and allow the Lord to minister to your personal needs. You can have a miracle. And here is God's man for this hour, Reverend Ernest Angley. Greetings in the name of the Lord and welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm the Reverend Chris Mockamer. I'm an associate pastor at Ernest Angley's Grace Cathedral, and I'll be your guest host for a special program today that I know will bless your soul. You'll enjoy good gospel music and singing, a message by the Reverend Ernest Angley, and Kathy Millar will be on the program sharing with you powerful testimonies of how God is working through this Jesus ministry around the world. But first, it's the Victory Trio, and they will be singing, I'm Now Ready. Trumpet will sound. I'm now ready. We'll leave the ground. I'm now ready. The trumpet I'll hear. I'll I'm hear. now ready. I'll have no, fear. have no fear. I'm now ready. I'll leave with a shout. With a shout. I'm now ready. Without a doubt. Oh, Jesus, holy face. I'll His see. face I'll see. Right with the groom is what I'll is be. What I'll Leaving this world won't say goodbye. Won't say goodbye. I'm now ready. Soon, Jesus, I see. I'm now ready. Have the victory. I'm now ready. A trumpet will sound. I'm now ready. We'll leave the ground. I'm 
not going to miss it when Jesus comes again. I'm going to go to heaven forever and be with him. There's going to be a banquet in heaven up on high. We'll celebrate with Jesus in that sweet by and by. Who's going to heaven? Who's going to make that trip? Who's going to heaven on that old gospel ship? Who's going to heaven to leave this world behind? Who's going to heaven? It's almost time. Well, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to leave the ground. Leave the ground. Won't be long till rapture. That trumpet's going to sound. It's going to sound. We'll see our Jesus step, step out on step, that step, step. I'm going to go to heaven. Hallelujah shout Who's going to heaven Who's going to make that trip Who's going to heaven On that old gospel ship Who's going to heaven To leave this world behind Who's going to heaven It's almost time Who's going to heaven Who's going to make that trip Who's going to heaven On that old gospel ship Who's going to heaven To leave this world behind This is a teaching session. Jesus preached and he taught so many wonderful things. And he called me to teach and preach. And I love it. I delight in it. And he's sending such messages to the bride. What love, what grace. The subject is never condemn what the word oppose. Say it, never condemn what the word oppose. The word of God is our road map. It is a lamp unto our feet. It is truth and is able to make people wise under salvation. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise under salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? And then in Psalms, the 119th Psalm, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Think about that. A lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. All of our paths are lit up for us. Lit up for us through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. We're not going to lose our way. It's so plain, so plain. It is a book of life that did not come by the will of man, but holy men of God wrote as the Holy Ghost moved on them to write it. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That means man did not think it up. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And Jesus told people who didn't know the scriptures that they were in error. 
Matthew chapter 22, verse 29, Jesus answered, said unto them, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Jesus told some Jews one day, to search the scriptures. Why? Because they thought they had eternal life through the scriptures, yet they were condemning Jesus whom the scriptures upheld. Couldn't, they couldn't be saved by condemning this, what God upheld, the word of God. John, the fifth chapter, Verses 38 and 39. And you have not, you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him you believe not. Search the scriptures in them. You think you have eternal life, but you don't. And they are they which testify of me. And he wanted them to search the scriptures. They tell of him. They were condemning what the word of God upheld. So many people today are religious, but are not righteous. There's a drastic difference. They condemn things that the word opposed. They worship, they know not what. Jesus addressed a woman. Remember the woman at the well now. Now like this, and Paul addressed some people like this. John chapter 4, verses 22, 23. Jesus said, Ye worship, you know, not what. We know what we worship, because salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the worshippers shall worship the Father, in spirit and in truth, in the word, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Acts chapter 17, verses 22, 23. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. They were very religious worshiped all kind of gods, but not the God that the word upheld. For as I passed by, this is Paul now telling them, I passed by and beheld your devotions. I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. That's the God I'm declaring unto you, Paul said. The word upholds the virgin birth, yet people condemn it because they can't wrap their human mind around the miraculous power of God. Like Nicodemus, they're asking, how can this thing be? Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. This is how it was. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel and be an interpreter is God with us. God with us. Luke chapter 1. Verse 27, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Luke chapter 1, verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, she asked, how can this be, seeing I know not a man? The Holy Ghost shall come up on thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing 
which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. There it is. If there had not been a virgin birth, there would not have been a spotless lamb to take away the sin of the world. Jesus had to have sinless blood, and that could only come from the Father in heaven, not an earth father. If you condemn the virgin birth, there is no salvation for you. Don't condemn what the word oppose. You in radio land, television land, remember, don't condemn what the word oppose or you'll never see heaven, never. The word oppose, living free from sin, once you are born again, you cannot worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. If you are sinning, it is impossible. When you are born again, you receive life. When you sin, you die. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And die they did. God gave Adam and Eve eternal life, but they sinned and forfeited that life. When we were washed in the blood, that's the only way we could have been born you of the Lamb of God gave us eternal life. But if we sin willfully after that, we die spiritually. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. No. And he that sinneth in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. People say you can't live free from sin. Not if you don't have Jesus, you can't. Jesus was the word made flesh. And he brought sinless blood to set us free. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Doesn't really sound like you can go to heaven because you didn't commit sin. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You can't have the devil in your life and go to heaven. The word opposed the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Acts 2, 4, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And people, that's what the Bible teaches. But preachers will preach and say, tongues is of the devil. How awful they have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. Blasphemed. I told you I was in a revival. It was my second revival, I believe it was, beginning of my preaching. We were having a great landslide of a time in the Lord. And one morning while I was there, 
there came a knock on the parsonage door and there stood a man, a pastor. He had pastored in that church. In the past, he had moved on to another city or town, but he had gotten up in his pulpit while there and said, tongues came from hell and is going back there. And he told the pastor, he said, the Spirit of God left me when I said that. And Ann felt God since. He said, I was down praying this morning and the Lord told me he wouldn't forgive me unless I came back. Came to you. If, he won't, if it takes going before your church people, I'll do it. But he said he wouldn't forgive me unless I came back and apologized. And I'm here to apologize. You see, he almost blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. If you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, there's no chance for you in this world. And Jesus said, neither in the world to come. So many today condemn speaking in tongues. They don't understand it, so they put their own interpretation on it, just like man did in the early church when the disciples received the Holy Ghost. Acts, the second chapter, verses 12, 13. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But what was said by Simon Peter, preachers have condemned the Holy Ghost baptism with speaking in tongues. And so many, even the Christian world, are like the believers in Ephesus who didn't know whether there be any Holy Ghost baptism. Acts, the 19th chapter, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass that when Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard will there be any Holy Ghost. Paul's question to these disciples who didn't know about the Holy Ghost baptism was this. Acts, the 19th chapter, verses 3 through 6. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto to John's baptism. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And the Lord has gifted me with laying hands on people, calling the Holy Ghost down. Thousands have received the Holy Ghost just in one service over, overseas. There are many evidences of the Holy Ghost baptism, but the first evidence is a speaking with other tongues. You're not baptized until you get the tongue of fire. The word upholds the laying on of hands. You must not condemn it. Matthew, the 19th chapter, verses 13, 15. Then were there brought unto him little children that he, Jesus, should put his hands on them. He laid his hands on them and departed thence. Mark, the sixth chapter, verse two. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him 
were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Mark chapter 6, verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And that was because he was where his family was. And they, who is he? Why, his brothers and sisters are here. Fools that they were. Fools they were. Mark, the eighth chapter, verse 23 through 25. And he took the blind man by the hand, led him out of the town. Now he took him out from there, where there's so much unbelief. When he had spit on his eyes, put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands upon the, his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw all men normal, clearly. That's wonderful. Friend, I hope you are enjoying this program today, and I do hope that Reverend Angeli's message blessed you. Now be sure and tune in next week for the conclusion. But now we are in the month of May, and this is a time of celebration for our mothers. And we are joining together this month praying for unsaved mothers. You may have an unsaved mother or know of an unsaved mother. Send that name in to this Jesus ministry and we will pray with you, agreeing that God get a hold of that unsaved mother. And you ministry partners do read the letter Reverend Angeli sent to you this month for May. It's all about a blessing to mothers. Oh friend, Reverend Angeli really looks to the Lord for his thoughts in these letters. So read the letter and it will bless you and edify you. Our mailing address is Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio 44309. In Canada, write to Ernest Angley Ministries, Box 970, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, M8Z5P9. You can always make donations when you have the opportunity, friend, through our website. But all that you give to this Jesus ministry blesses and helps us to win souls. Friend, we do appreciate all that you give. So keep standing by and expect heaven's window open blessings poured out upon you in this final hour. And each month that you sponsor this Jesus ministry, you get a new book of the month. And these giant little books are powerful messages by Reverend Ernest Angley in booklet form. And each month, it's a different message that will feed your soul. So keep standing by, friend. And when you send in that donation for May, be sure to request the May book of the month. And the title is, What Hinders You? Friend, keep your eyes on Jesus in this final hour or you're subject to fail. So be sure to request gift offer P331. Well, we have for you coming up some more good gospel music and singing. And just a little later, Kathy Millar will be on the program sharing some great testimonies. But right now, it's Rocky Lowther with He's Soon Coming. Jesus Rebirth. He's soon coming and it's almost time. Better get ready to make that flight. Oh, what a heartache left behind. Better get Jesus inside. Send disobedience 
will keep you from heaven Oh, how sad you'll be if left behind There is just one way and that is asking Jesus to Just let him in your heart and say he's mine He's soon coming and it won't be long Better get ready to leave this earth Can't take nothing but a heart and song to Jesus rebirth He's soon coming and it's almost time Better get ready to make that fight Oh, what a heart ain't left behind Better get Jesus inside You can be forgiven and the Lord will make you heal there's a way of staying free from sin You may think that there's no hope But Jesus said there is So lift your hands and ask Him to come in He's soon coming in, it won't be long Better get ready to leave this earth Can't take nothing but a heart and song You'll need a Jesus rebirth He's soon coming in, it's almost time Get ready to make that fly Oh, what a heartache left behind Better get Jesus inside He's soon coming and it won't be long Better get ready to leave this earth Can't take nothing but a heart and song You'll need a Jesus rebirth He's soon coming and it's almost time Better get ready to make that fly Oh, what a heartache left behind music and singing. And right now I have a special guest with me today. It's Kathy Millar with testimonies from around the world. Welcome Kathy. Thank you for having me today. It's good to have you on the program. Well I am so excited to share these letters with our viewers today. And I have a letter here from a woman writing from Zambia, Africa. And she writes, Dear Reverend Anshley, 
I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am a regular viewer of your TV program. It is my church service every Sunday on Zambia TV. I have been so inspired by your preaching and many people, they make the program their church because they can't find a church where they're at. And the way Reverend preaches, they get fed every Sunday and it's wonderful. Oh, it is. Yes. And they are doing that in this hour and people are not only being fed and blessed spiritually, but then they have the chance to receive prayer at the end of the broadcast and they're receiving miracles and healings as well. So we're bringing church right into their homes. Oh, and yes, it's we wonderful. are. <laughs> well, she goes on to say, I'd like to share my testimony with you. I had headaches and a painful right shoulder. I could not cook or write properly because of the pain in my shoulder. One Sunday service, you instructed the people to raise a hand and touch the TV screen as a point of contact for prayer. I did as you said, and it was like I felt lightning shoot through my arm and head. So she felt that manifestation of that power. I continued to pray that by Jesus' stripes I would be healed. Praise be to the Lord. With God, all things are possible to those who believe. I received my healing. So God really moved for her. Oh, he did. She says, may God bless you always, yours faithfully. <laughs> it's always interesting to hear them describe the power of God and how it works in their body. It's amazing. So many people have different manifestations, but and it's all the same power. Yes, and I love when God does that, when he makes himself real in that way. So their faith can be increased more to receive what That's God right. has for them. So it's, it's wonderful when we hear testimonies about how God moves in that fashion. Oh, it is. Well, here's a letter from a woman writing from Ghana, West Africa. And she writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, thanks for your encouraging letter. Yes, it is true that God is faithful to his word. He supplies all things that we need for soul, mind, and body. Healing comes from God Almighty, and we must put our trust in him. I have battled a neck problem for five years, and no one seemed to care about me. But praise God, by faith I have been healed through the blessed cloth you sent. The devil has been put to shame and God has been glorified. Praise the Lord. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for your many fastings and prayers. Healing comes from God and he fulfills his promises. We are a blessed people to know the one and only true God and Savior, yours in Christ. Uh, it's a great testimony. Yeah, so she received that healing through the use of the blessed cloth. Mm -hmm and many people receive their miracles and healings through that anointed cloth that Reverend Angeli prays over. They are. <clears throat> and it's wonderful. Well, here I have a letter from a prisoner who wrote in from South Africa. And this is a wonderful testimony. And he writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, greetings to you and your whole ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. I am writing to testify about the kindness of God I was very sick and I had lost hope in life. So I wrote requesting prayer from you. The doctors had just told me that my CD4 count was very low and I must be on ARVs, which is an antiretroviral drug for AIDS, of which I did, but by then I had developed serious complications. After requesting for your prayers, the same doctors told me that there was nothing seriously wrong with me. My viral low was very low and my CD4 count is normal. So see, when you have HIV AIDS, it's the reverse. Your viral load will be very high and your CD4 count will be very low. So when he went back to the doctors after requesting prayer, it was reverse. So God Medical had moved. Medical confirmation yes, of the miracle. Absolutely. It is true because from then on, I, I have had no complications and I am now strong. I just trusted your prayers and believe God to have mercy on me. I praise God and I thank you for your prayers. I don't even mind if you share my testimony with others in need of healing. 
it is a mighty hand of God and I cannot keep it a secret. <laughs> and many people, you know, they do need to keep it a secret because they can lose their jobs if they testify that they had AIDS. So that a lot of them hide that fact that they have that disease. They do. Yes, so this gentleman, he's willing to share it with the world. I also want to thank you for your magazines for they are now food to my spirit. May God bless you more, yours in Christ. Well, that testimony right there should encourage all of our viewers, no matter what problem they have in their life, God has all power to deliver. Absolutely, and we hear about people being delivered of cancer and all kinds of incurable diseases. That's God right. can do it. Oh, He does. Yes. He heals all manner of sickness and disease. <clears throat> Doesn't matter what medical science or doctors say. Man and medical science can only go so far, but God has the cure for everything. That's right. But the Lord said, only believe. Yes. All things are possible. Yes, and we have the faith in this ministry to believe all things. That's right. <laughs> well, here is a letter from a man writing from Ghana, West Africa. And he writes, Dear Reverend Angley, I thank God for his love and mercy, which he has brought to my life through your prayers. I want to tell you that two months ago, I was laid up with severe suffering. In the darkest hours of my life, when I was tormented with hopelessness, I received your letter in blessed cloth. So praise God. Right in time. Right in time. As I read the letter, God gave me hope and strengthened me. I became strong in my belief in him and I kept the blessed cloth on my body and prayed. The suffering left my body immediately. I praise God that he has healed me and has bestowed on me the strength to serve him. I no longer fear the enemy which had me bound the devils are running away from me as the days are passing by. <laughs> That's a good testimony. Yes, absolutely. Now I am reading the Bible daily and I have received Jesus as my personal savior. So God really moved for him. He did. He saw the light and he says, praise God. I pray that God will bless your ministry as you preach the gospel throughout the world. <laughs> And we have a lot of prayer warriors everywhere. Yes. Holding this Jesus ministry up before the Lord. Yes, absolutely. And it always amazes me when people get a miracle or a healing, many times they also receive salvation yeah. because God has made himself so real to that person. That's right. And well, then, miracles and healings, they, they draw people to salvation. They lead people to God. Yes. That's why he gives them. Yes, and that's why it's important for people to testify. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, here is a pastor writing from Zambia, Africa. Dear Reverend Angeli, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A young girl who was born blind had three layers of cataracts on both of her eyes. It looked like her eyes were covered over with white clouds. She had never been able to see since birth. We wrote to your ministry requesting prayer for her and you sent us the blessed cloth. We put the blessed cloth in water and squeeze drops of the anointed water into each of her eyes. The cataracts are completely gone and she is now seeing. That's a great <laughs> miracle. Isn't that beautiful? That's just it like is. our God to do something like that. It's just so amazing. She ends the letter saying, we thank God for this miracle and give him all the glory. And this is a pastor writing. So you know that she's definitely gonna be testifying of this miracle oh, to yes. many of her people in her congregation. And that should set that pastor on fire. Absolutely. To be more for the Lord and do more for him. And I think how precious for that child to receive her sight. She's never gonna forget that miracle. No, and those people that know the child. Yes what an impact that'll make on them. Absolutely. Well, here's a letter from a woman writing from Botswana, Southern Africa. And she writes, Dear Reverend Angeline, great, great greetings to you and your members. My thanks are not enough for what God has done for me through you and your ministry. I started having severe pains in my stomach. I was unable to walk, eat, stand, or even sleep and I was seriously losing weight. I received your blessed cloth and pinned it inside my clothing. Later, I removed it and placed it in a glass of water. I prayed 
and then drank the water. And we hear that a lot. People will do that. They'll either wear it in their clothing or they'll put it in water and then drink the water. So Whenever it takes for them to release their faith. Right. In a few days, the pains disappeared and I was well again. Praise be to God, hallelujah. I pray for you and your ministry to prosper and peace be with you and your family. May God continue blessing you and your ministry, amen. Amen is <laughs> amen right. Amen is right. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful when people write in and tell how God moves for them. And here's a woman writing from Zambia, Central Africa, and she testifies, Dear Reverend Angeli, I could not go on without expressing my gratitude to the Lord and to you for all the things I've learned through your teaching and example. I share your monthly magazines that you send me with, with others and it has changed many people's lives. And we hear that time and time again, people will receive literature, magazines, books from our ministry, and then they'll share them with others, mm -hmm. which is very special. I would like to tell you the following testimony. So even those who are dismal about HIV AIDS can get healed today through the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing is impossible with him. I have a niece who is healed of HIV AIDS by using the blessed cloth. When my niece began having symptoms of HIV AIDS, her mother rushed her to the hospital for treatment. She suffered from severe diarrhea, fever, and she quickly became thinner. After the treatments, no improvements were seen. Eventually, I prayed for her using the bless cloth, and the following day I went to see her, and she was well. So the Lord had healed her. Oh, yes, <laughs> praise God. So I know they had to be excited, very excited about that. Well, I have another letter here, and this is from Kumari, Ghana, West Africa. And the letter reads, Dear Reverend Angeli, Praise the Lord, hallelujah. It is wonderful how God is using you to minister in so many countries, proclaiming his word throughout the world. So many people are receiving their healings as they tune in to your television and radio programs. And it's just so wonderful that we have the television program and so many other avenues like our website and so forth that really can bless the people and of course we have our radio app now available as well that people can download and they can actually you know have it on their smartphones or on their yes, tablets that's or great. on their computer i know personally i have the app downloaded on my smartphone so i occasionally will bring it up and and when I'm getting ready in the morning, I have it playing so I can hear the good music and the preaching. It's so convenient, isn't it? It is, it's wonderful. And also, if you have a Bluetooth device, like my car has the capability of Bluetooth, so I can actually stream the radio app through my car and listen to it while I'm driving. That's wonderful. And it is wonderful because there's not much on the radio nowadays. Yeah, and it's 24-7. Yes. Anytime you want to be blessed by our good gospel music and singing right. or preaching, you just tune in. It's amazing. And what touches my heart is when I have hear people who write in how they're using the radio app. And, you know, it's amazing to think that they're in another country listening to the same exact thing that I'm listening to. So we're all connected. It's like having church throughout the whole entire world. And it's true. It is. It right. is. It's our world radio app. But God's provided this kind of technology for this final hour. Yes, yes, and he could foresee that. Yes, he could. yes, he did. Well, she goes on in her letter to say, at home, your literature is a blessing to the people. They are accepting Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Even my own father has given his life to Christ. Glory be to God. Praise God. <laughs> my family and I decided a long time ago to serve Christ through your ministry. We will continue to pray for you and your ministry that you will be blessed and the blessings will not stop. Thank you for the advice you gave me in your letter. It has helped me in so many ways, yours faithfully. So here again, this ministry is blessing people in so many ways and the Lord has really blessed us with the technology to reach people across the globe. He really has. Yes. 
Well, thanks, Kathy, for being on the program today and sharing these testimonies. And friend, we have a very special video that we want you to watch, and it concerns the Ernest Angley World Radio. Listen. Ernest Angley World Radio is a powerful internet radio that streams God's love and greatness 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't need a traditional radio, just your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. And you can download our free apps from our website at ernestangley.org. When troubles push in on you, then tune into sermons. I accuse Christianity for having ministers that will deny what God has promised us. Songs. I'm going to join the angels band. I'll sing with the angels in glory band. And personal testimonies that build faith and joy. They were drugs of mental addiction, physical addiction. Instantly, Reverend Angley, I was delivered from those devils that bound my life. Praise the Lord, that's good. Also, go to ernestangley.org and visit the worship center and see life-changing miracles. Come on! <laughs> Receive personal prayer from Reverend Angley. There's the healing hands like no other hands. And sign up as an online ministry partner and receive free downloads. Dip your cup in God's river of love and never be the same. Once again, he's reaching out to you. And once again, you turn away just like you always do. How did it become so easy for you to say no to the one who loves you the most? Where will you be when time will cease and the saints of God have gathered in that land of peace? Cause loved ones who cared so dear, he won't know Cross that heavenly shore, your name will be no more. Friend, it's time to heed the call and surrender it all. He's standing outside your door, but the time will come when. But you won't let him in What more could he have done To win your heart, to earn your love Was his blood not enough? Where will you be when time will cease And God's children sing a new song On those golden streets Cause loved ones who cared so dear They won't know you over there Across that Heavenly shore, your name will be no more. Friend, it's time to heed the call and surrender it all. Oh, he's standing outside your door, but the time will come when you won't matter. Friend, I tell you, there's a powerful message in that song by Corinthia. Now it's prayer time on the broadcast. 
Friend, give your heart to the Lord. Don't delay any longer. Once again, the Lord is giving you an opportunity to come to him. Accept this opportunity. Receive Jesus into your life. The Bible is very clear. It states today is the day of salvation, for tomorrow may never come for you. Pray with me while the Holy Spirit's drawing you. Say, O oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Lord, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe the power in the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins, all of my sins. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. Friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus is yours, which means you have the healer living within your soul. Now get ready to receive the miracle, the healing that you need. Maybe there's a great bondage in your life that you just can't seem to be free of. Let the power of God do for you what no other power can do. Put your hand against mine on the screen. This is a form of laying on of hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring those who are sick and afflicted, those with a great need, a great bondage in their life. God, they're looking to you right now. So lay a healing hand upon each one. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let your blood power flow, Lord. Break every bondage, heal the sick and afflicted. Make them well, Lord, for your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and amen. Friend, watch every improvement and give God all the honor and glory. And if you have the opportunity, I'd like to invite you to be with us in our services this coming weekend at Ernest Angeles Grace Cathedral. Four powerful services every weekend in two locations. First, it's the Friday night miracle service starting at 7 p.m. in our Cuyahoga Falls location. We are located at 2700 State Road. People travel from other states, even other nations to be in that service because we have the healing line and the power of God moves to bring deliverance to people. And what a time in the Lord it is. Saturday night, we have a wonderful youth service at 7 p.m. in our Akron location, 1055 Canton Road in Springfield Township, a service dedicated to the youth. However, people of all ages are welcome to attend. Then Sunday, two services back in the Chicago Falls location. First, it's the morning worship service at 10 a.m. A special message in the main auditorium, also Sunday school for the boys and girls on the upper level in our junior church department. Then Sunday at 7 p.m., it's a mighty evangelistic service with more good gospel music and singing that will bless your soul. We look forward to seeing you. And if you're coming from out of town and you need directions, well, you can call 330-920-1019 or simply go to our website, ErnestAngeley.org. And if you've been blessed through this Jesus ministry, send us your testimony by email to testimonies at ErnestAngeley.org. God bless you today. You can enroll in the Ernest Angeley Ministries Online Bible College. It's open to everyone and you can work at your own pace. Being trained in God's great truths will make your life prosper in the Lord and enable you to be a great blessing to your friends, family, and those in great need. Go to ernestangeley.org and start today. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angeley Outreach Partners.